Alright, what's up YouTube? I'm here with one of my very, very early childhood friends and he's actually a tech guy. And so I figured this would be a really good way to give an insight into a different profession aside from medicine because I know there are people out there that are doing things aside from trying to be a doctor, nurse, health professional. And he right now currently works at Microsoft. So I'm going to give you uh, a brief insight into him and we're gonna, I'm going to give him, I have some questions I want to ask him. But hopefully this will provide more insight into what it's like to be in a tech career uh, and what it's like to be um, just different. And I'll talk, and, and you understand what I mean by that as we move forward. So before we go forward, let me have him introduce himself. So why don't you give them your name? Yeah, and, hello. Uh, um, I'm Sanchez Gupta. Um, I'm currently a product manager at Microsoft. So he's working at Microsoft and he's like 21. 22. 22. Just turned 22. And he graduated like a year ago. So he's already at Microsoft. So clearly you can see he's done a lot of things. Um, so I want to talk to you about back in school, yeah. when you're a student in school, like what kind of student were you? Yes. Um, and high school, let's talk high school. High school, actually throughout all of my um, student life, I wasn't necessarily the best student. I wasn't the worst student. I would say I'm somewhere in between a B and A student, but not like a straight A student like a lot of my coworkers are. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really um, intimidating actually sometimes when I'm dealing with people that are like straight A students because I'm like, oh, these people are going to be more successful than I am. Um, so that kind of helped me figure out like, okay, um, student, student life, I don't think is the way I want to have my success. Mm -hmm. Um, so I thought I, I need to go and branch out to other things. So, um, personally, um, I started out programming. Um, so I started out doing a bunch of side projects because the main reason I got into tech is because I can build products and build, solve problems that people are helping, mm -hmm. are having. Um, so then that really helps me gain an advantage over these people that are getting like straight A's and have a competitive edge on them. Got it. So you're saying that you started programming a lot earlier in yes. general, right? Like you said you weren't very good at school, but even when I was with you as friends, like you yeah. would always be programming at a pretty young yes. age. So how, I know that like for me, they never taught programming yeah. in school. So how did you get yourself to learn programming? And yeah. How did you know that that's actually something you were interested in, wanted to go down that line so yeah. early? So I think like, um, at least throughout your early schooling, like I'd say middle school and especially high school, mm -hmm. um, a lot of students are trying to figure out what they're interested in. Okay. Um, and I always saw my strong points are always like math and logic, and I'm like, what careers would this be good for? Um, what is it set up well for? And um, my brother and my parents are both engineers, mm -hmm. so I thought that's a good line to at least consider. Um, so my brother, he started out a similar way. He was um, not a very much school person, but he had a bunch of side projects and it always intrigued me. Mm -hmm. I'd talk to him like, why are you doing it this way? Why are you doing everything? And he had control of everything because it's his side project. And that's something I absolutely loved and something I actually don't like of school mm -hmm. is that it's a very particular scope and you have to follow these exact set of directions. Um, and I think it, it uh, narrows your creativity. Got it. So... So there are two questions that brings up. Yeah. So first is, obviously you're doing a bunch of programming at a young age, yeah. and the second thing is you're doing a lot of personal projects. Yes. So the first thing is, how did you even learn to code, first of all, yeah. to do these side projects? Uh, and then once you answer that, I'll talk about my second question. Sure. Um, so I pretty much started programming, I'd say late middle school. Okay, um, that's insane. This is when my brother was taking AP Computer Science, he's three years older than me, uh -huh. um, at his high school. Okay. Um, and then it just always intrigued me, and then I'm like, okay, I want to go down this career path, so how do I get a head start in it? Mm -hmm. um, and there were no classes offered to middle school yeah, students exactly. or anything. Yeah, exactly, they don't teach that. Um, so I started out very basic with HTML, CSS, which are like, not really programming languages, mm -hmm. but they're kind of like designing websites, because okay. he did a lot of web development, and then that's where I got interested as well okay got it so you you learned so did you just like google how to code yeah so i had i had guidance from my <laughs> there was brother. no code academy back then. there was no which, code which academy. which is what i'm trying to use because i'm trying to learn the code but there was no code academy there so was no code academy um i think the internet is like one of our most valuable resources you can literally learn everything just on the internet you don't necessarily need a class for everything mm -hmm. and then having the guidance of someone who was doing well in the field also helped me out a lot and that was your brother and that was my brother okay got it so now that you talked a bit about how you started coding yeah you kept going and you learned a bit, yeah. you learned a bit, and you probably kept doing that throughout high school. Yeah. And I remember in high school, that's when you started doing like personal projects. Yes. That's when you had enough knowledge to do some of the projects on your own. So what kind of projects did you pursue? Yes. How did you know what you wanted to do? You know, like, how did you know? I know one of his things, one of the things he made was like a UC calculator. It calculated, yeah. you put in like your SAT score, your GPA, certain number of extracurricular things you do, and it basically told you like percentage-wise your chances of getting into certain UCs. Yeah. And so that was one thing he did. But the point is like, how did you know what to build? And how did you, how were you, it's one thing to know something, like yeah. know facts, and another thing to apply it. So how did you 
bridge that gap and how yeah. did you get so that? So I think um, when I talk to a lot of people nowadays that are like, I want to get into tech, I want to do a lot of side projects like you had done, um, they would just say like, I don't know how to get started or I don't know how to solve this one problem and people get too caught up on one problem mm -hmm. where it's like when I'm building something off the bat, do I know how to do everything? Obviously not. But do I think I have the skills to learn all the things? And I think so, given that the internet is such a good resource and you, I had the right mentors and everything. Um, so I think that really motivated me, like, because a lot of times you would just have problems and you'd get stuck. But as long as you know how to solve them, then you can kind of go ahead. Okay, so what kind of projects did you order? Some sample projects? Yeah, so I think one of this my... This is in high school, by the way, for content. One of my first projects, um, which you might not even be aware of, actually, mm -hmm. was... Um, I went to Monta Vista High School for a year before I transferred to Homestead High School. Okay. Um, I made something called MV Forum. It was a Monta Vista Forum. Um, and this is where, like, this was one of my first things I made. It wasn't necessarily the most thought through or anything, but the whole idea was to just have people communicating on it. Now, if you're going to ask me questions like, how do I think I'll compete with Facebook and stuff, I didn't have the maturity to realize that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, but every single project I had, I learned a lot from. Um, so I learned like, okay, I made this thing and I started like telling people about it. Yeah, you made something. And then I'm like, deal. I'm like, why aren't people using it? Mm -hmm. And then that's when I'm like, holy shit, like I need to talk to people more. I need to figure out like, what do people want to use? I pretty much built something without a problem existing. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I think that was the biggest lesson I learned there. Okay, and so you, you obviously did a bunch of these side projects and you learn a lot of things. Um, and obviously none of these side projects were like Facebook caliber. Nothing yeah, really yeah. took off, which is not to discredit anything, of but course. obviously nothing was huge yes. and down the line you know there was this quote from steve jobs like you can't connect the dots looking forward yeah. you can only do connect them looking yeah. backwards so do you think these projects that you did what the, the lessons you learned from them do you think they eventually played a role in absolutely what you're doing now which is obviously you're at microsoft you're doing a lot of other stuff you do side projects still to this absolutely day. i think one main thing that it helped me out in is it helped me figure out my career path Okay. Um, so a standard career path for a computer science major is a software engineer. Okay. I am a product manager. And what do, what's the line for that? To yes. To so is pretty it like much four years of undergrad. Uh, product manager is a little. Um, it it's not as clear because okay. um, computer science directly goes to software engineering. Okay. But there's no degree that gets you qualified to be a product manager. Okay. Usually and that's what product you are manager. Yes. At Usually okay. yes. Usually product managers are people who have done software development mm -hmm. and then they want to go into more of a different type of role. So just to give a little bit brief on what a product manager does, um, instead of like building the actual product, they figure out what is going to be built, why it's going to be built, who it's going to be built for, and those type of things. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that was the biggest thing. And the reason my personal project helped me is um, I was able to, like for example, the MV Forum, I was able to learn like you need to talk to people, you need to figure out what the problem is. Um, every single project I had had a bunch of these realizations, like why didn't it work? Mm -hmm. um, and the main reason I actually got into tech and coding is because I loved products and solving problems. Okay. And I didn't actually like coding as much as I like solving problems. Yeah. And I wouldn't have realized that if I've done all these things and I'm like, oh my God, I want to build this thing. Instead of like, I'm so excited to build this one thing that someone told me. Yeah. Um, the first part, the first part that I just said um, interests me a lot more. So creativity. Actually. Yes. And actually when I was talking to the Microsoft recruiter at the career fair, um, he was this looking was at before my, you had the job? This was before I had the job or the internship. Okay. Um, I was applying there and you know, you talk to the recruiter, you go over like your resume. Um, I had previous software internships, like three of software internships and I had a bunch of side projects. And he's like, interesting. Where did you learn more from those internships or those side projects? I think they were both really good because I really like hands-on things. Okay. So I thought they were both a good exploration of hands-on thing and they were both, they were very different. Yeah. Um, but, but what when, I mean is when you're in high school, you couldn't have gotten those internships, yes, right? So yes. you still got just as much out of being in high school and doing those personal projects as you would have if you pursued just like an internship yeah. in college, which yeah. I think is a big deal. I yes. think that's huge. Okay. Um, so I was talking to this recruiter mm -hmm. um, and then he's looking at my resume and he's like, oh, it's, no, it's pretty unique that someone has this many side projects. And then he is asking me about each side product project. He's like, what made of it? What motivated you? He asked me some technical questions. He said, you know, what were your learnings and everything? And he's like, wow, this is really like unique. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's when he said, you know, um, I'm, I would recommend that you explore this product management role because I was initially pursuing a software engineering role. Mm -hmm. So um, this was when I was a sophomore in college. Okay. Um, so I'm like, okay, um, I'm not sure. I mean, I've, I've been planning my whole, you know, career to be mm -hmm. a software engineer. I um, mean, I looked into it more and I'm like, wow, I didn't know that someone coming out of college could have a product management role. And I'm yeah. like, this is really interesting. Got it. Um, so I applied for it and then it turned out that like 
that was the role that I think was meant for me given my experience and my interest because mm -hmm. it was a lot of like why do you build these products yeah. like how do you make it better and all those type of things mm -hmm. that I had a bunch of experience that someone who just did school would not and it's something I would not have realized if I did not do these side projects that's good all right so I think I'm gonna give you two last questions sure so one of them I think is gonna resonate a lot with you because I think a lot of people have this belief that to get anywhere in life you need to get like perfect grades yeah you need to be the top of your class you need to do X, Y, and Z, get into the best school, you know, like go to Harvard, go to yeah. Yale. Um, and clearly, based on your experiences, you were never that like top of yeah. the class student. But you still have managed to find a very prestigious position, do what you managed to love to do. Um, so what do you have to say to those people that think that, you know, they might not be the best, but at the same time, they, they might be beating themselves up for it. You know, yeah, like, yeah. I think that there's something to be said for those people. And I think you can talk best. Yes. Like, what do you want to say to um, them? So I think that um, going to a great prestigious university obviously has its perks that, um, that you will not get otherwise. You get more opportunities, you get a lot more things, but it's not the end of the world if that's not who you are. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest thing is figuring out what you do best um, and figuring out your true passion. Uh -huh. Because when I realized that, you know, I'm not gonna be this 4.0 student and I can't outcompete everyone just because of my student, you know, cause I like a lot more hands-on stuff or whatever the reason may be, mm -hmm. um, I figured out like, okay, um, I'm able to manage a lot of things so I can kind of do school pretty well and kind of do other things that'll mm -hmm. give me learnings. And overall, I think that might be a competitive edge to um, beat some of these people that went to, you know, these top schools. Yeah. So I think um, the key thing is just to figure out who you really are. Mm -hmm. Because, um, for example, for me, one skill that I think I gained a lot from doing this is how to take shortcuts well. Yeah. And this is not usually a skill that will get you successful in, um, in school because you should go like very thorough and in yeah. depth. Um, but this is a skill that I use a lot in product management that helps the product move a lot faster. And it's a skill that Microsoft really values. Got it. So I think that's really big because I think I meet so many students all the daily yeah. that basically put their life on the line when something isn't perfect academically. Yeah. But on, in your case, I think the thing I've always respected a lot is you never let it break you down. It, mm -hmm. It's always something that you know, you're like, okay, the school thing is not working for me and it's not something that works for everyone. But you instead found what does work and mm -hmm. you capitalized on it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's huge. All right, so last question. Yeah. If there is something you could say to anyone who is thinking of pursuing tech um, or giving them a piece of advice at a very early stage, whether that be in high school, middle yeah. school, what, what would you say to them? Um, I think for something like tech, um, school is, it teaches you the skills to do it, but a lot of times you're gonna learn from scratch on the job because there's a new programming language, a new framework or something that they're using. So my biggest advice I'd give to people is be like hands-on, mm -hmm. like build stuff and that stuff, it'll give you so much experience and learning that employers will love it. You'll learn a lot and it'll be a good uh, recipe for success in the long term. Cool. And I don't even know if you're okay with this because I never asked, <coughs> but if, is there, if they wanted to contact you, is there like an email or something that sure. you have? Sure. Yeah. You can uh, contact me actually on my personal email, which okay. is just Sanchit, S-A-N-C-H-I-T. I'll, I'll write it on the G screen somewhere. G94 at gmail.com. Okay. Okay. Great. All right, dude. Perfect. Thanks for meeting with me. This is great because I don't have very many friends that are like him, but hopefully this provided some insight and I'll be doing more of these hopefully with different professions. But yeah, thanks. Thank you. See you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. You want to check out any of my other videos, there's going to be one right here. Another link to one of my videos right here. And another video right here. Why not? I'll put one video right over here. And last but not least, if you want to subscribe to this channel, really appreciate it because I'm still an early YouTuber trying to get it down. But a subscription button should be right over here. So please subscribe. Cool. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Hope you find these videos helpful.